um, let's zoom in again you can see that it's a very vectory looking image this was um, you know my attempt to approximate the 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 kind of finish style of the the Powerpuff Girls and, and so I inked this I was I was using I was using essentially the vector the vector tools so let me give you an example of that um, when I want to draw a line I use the line tool okay you get a perfectly straight line perfectly even thickness it takes it takes the hand completely out of it if I wanted to do let's say these these little perfectly tapered frowns I have on the the vexed Powerpuff Girls here um, I'm going to go to my curve tool and I'm going to usually stroke in and stroke out. If I just do a normal curve, this is the way it works in, in Manga Studio, I, I, I make a line and then I pull it like this and I can make it curve in any direction and once I'm happy with the curve I click it and that gives me my line. Okay. Now for those little mouths I want them to taper so I go to stroke in, stroke out, and I'm going to do the same thing and you can see it tapers out the line and you can see that these little frowns here that I've made I can zoom right in on a frown they're just they're just using that tool very quick and simple and you can see where I've used tapers here on the eyebrows and things like that um, when I do ovals I use the uh, the ellipse tool I can just go like this, spin it around, and there I have a perfect oval. So the eyes, obviously, cheeks up here on the bad guy, um, all using that tool. So basically, with all of these tools, um, I'm able to get a finished look that fairly, uh, fairly accurately approximates um, the look of the Powerpuff Girls, uh, the way that they are rendered in the show. Um, you know, I'm not worried too much about sort of holding on to some kind of personal idiosyncratic style when I do pieces like this. I think style, for the most part, is something that you just can't help. Uh, so, you know, whatever style elements that are in there that are sort of authentically mine are, are going to stay there and I can't get rid of them. So, um, so saying that, you know, I, I, tried to, I tried to give it a finished style that was going to really feel like the Powerpuff Girls. So now that I'm done with this image, you can see if this were just going to be a black and white image, this feels very sort of spidery. Um, it does not have any spot blacks in it, um, except for a couple of places. And those would really be necessary if this is just going to be a black and white image. Um, but I knew it was going to be color from the start, so basically what I've done is I've left room for color. Okay, so this piece doesn't really work that well in black and white, but that's sort of acknowledged at this stage because I know I'm moving the color. Uh, when I'm ready to move to color, now it's a pretty simple process. I go to File, Export, Export File, and um, I can specify the size that I want. And down here, I want it to be a Photoshop document. So I would hit OK. I've already done that, so I'm not going to. And it would export, and then I could open it up in Photoshop, which is what I'm going to do right now. So now I've come over, and this is the exact same piece and now it is in Photoshop. Um, I use Photoshop for coloring. Uh, I have Manga Studio 4 and you can color in that program but I've never even tried. Uh, I have absolutely um, no complaints about Photoshop whatsoever. Uh, I love the program and so uh, I just don't have any reason even to try it on Manga Studio. Uh, it may have some advantages uh, but just don't know. So um, I exported it. I have it in four different layers. Um, you can see here, this is my layers palette in uh, Photoshop. And I think I did this with about 10, 10 to 15 layers, you can see there. Um, and four of these layers are the layers that started in Manga Studio. So here are this layer. Hmm, I don't know what that layer is. Oh, there we go. These are the inside lines of the buildings. You see, I can bring them up or make them disappear. Um, these are the outside lines of the buildings, again, make them come up, make them disappear. Here are the, uh, the villain, he's got his own layer, and the girls are on top. Okay, so those are my, my four layers there, and what I'm, what I, the first thing I do now is I do, uh, flats. Here is my flats layer, okay, 
Now, this is the coloring method that I use. It's very, like I said, it can be very different from what other people use. But when I do flats, I start out with what I uh, what are called local colors. So basically, I take a sort of standard um, Powerpuff Girls model sheet, and I try to get the sort of exact colors that they usually are. Um, you know, the colors that they would be under sort of neutral white light. So you can see that Bubbles has got her sort of light primary blue. Um, Buttercup is green, and, and uh, Blossom has her orange hair and her sort of pink outfit. Uh, him is, is pretty much straight red with the yellow eyes. Um, I did the buildings, just sort of generic buildings color. Uh, I tried to give it some variety so they wouldn't all be the same color. And, um, you know, that was it. Um, if I wanted to go with a sort of straightforward type of piece, I would just give a normal color sky. Um, but I decided pretty early on that I wanted this, this piece to have sort of a, a dominant color saturation. And so what I did was uh, I went with this sort of reddish maroon sky. And what's going to happen is that this whole piece is going to have this, this reddish color. Okay, but one of the beauties of working this way is that you can start with sort of the right colors. And then you can manipulate on different layers. Okay, so that you know that um, you don't have to judge it for yourself like you know, how much red do I put into this skin tone or this blue tone here, you can, uh, you can do it with a different layer. So let's go to this layer. This is um, the next layer I put on. And you can see right there, I sort of tinted everything red. The way I did this is I did a normal layer. Uh, I filled it with red, uh, essentially the red of the sky, a little bit, a little bit lighter. Um, and then I changed the blending mode to color. If I just did the blending mode to normal, this is what it would look like. Uh, and let's do 100% opacity. It would just change everything red, okay? Except for um, these places where I went a little bit lighter. Uh, I wanted the Powerpuff Girls to have a little bit of pop. So I didn't make them quite as red as everything else. So they're kind of standing out a little bit from their environment. Um, but I didn't want to be, obviously this is totally monochromatic. So I brought the opacity down to 50%. And instead of, uh, one of the things you do when you do a color overlay like this, if it's just in normal mode, even if you change the opacity, um, you lose your value differences. Okay, whatever value the color is, that gets put in. So the things that are really dark, uh, they get a little bit lighter. Things that are really light get a little bit darker. So in order to, you know, I want to keep the color. I want this red color and everything, but I don't want, um, I don't want all the values kind of washed out. So I'm going to change the blending mode to color. And you can see, there we go. The light stay light, the dark stay dark, but everything has that red in it. Okay. Now let's bump up to the next layer. Um, actually, I'm going to turn these off. Turn on the next layer. Okay. This is the this is the shading layer. And basically, what I do in this layer is I go in and I put on my shadows, uh, and they start out. You can see right now they're kind of reddish tinged in most places. Uh, they start out just as gray. I just pick a nice gray shadow color. Um, I, I have the image, I turn off the flats, so all I'm looking at is just a black and white image and I just go in and shade it, okay? So I put in the shadows in gray and everything, you know, and I try to get a light source. This is a very, very simple shading technique, you know, I have uh, my light source is sort of over here somewhere. So the darkest sides of the buildings are the ones that are opposite from the light source. So every little surface that's, that's parallel to that, I make that the darkest gray. And then the ones that are sort of running parallel to the light direction, those are sort of the intermediate colors. So you can see the sort of lighter gray there on all the buildings. And then anything that's hitting the light directly, I just left it white. I also uh, went in and put shadows on the girls themselves, thinking about, you know, light sources up here. So shadows on the opposite side, it's, it's fairly straightforward. Um, I tinted it uh, red because here, let's look at it with the with the colors now, um, just to make that sort of color saturation sort of more complete. So the shadows have a reddish cast to them, so it's like everything's sort of being bathed in this, this sort of reddish light. So now I have a, a light direction as well as a light situation or a light